Good morning and welcome to Croydon Sabbath School panel live. If you've joined us in the past few weeks and haven't a clue who I am, my name is Johnny Saul and we're broadcasting to you today live from the Croydon Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's great to be able to study God's Word and we're grateful that you've joined us here this morning. Um, I want to give a special word of thanks to Elder David Billett and his team who done such a marvelous job throughout the month of November, taking us deep into this study that we're looking at. And for those of you that tuned in last week, she described herself as a rookie. I'm referring to Sister Julia Gervais. It was her first time in the hosting chair, but for me, she graduated last week. What a wonderful lesson study that we had, and you wouldn't have known it was her first time. So thanks, Julia. Looking forward to you sitting in this chair again. So this is an interactive Bible study. We are live unless you're watching on demand or on catch up, so we want to hear from you. If you don't have a quarterly, as we call it, or an adult study guide, a link will appear on your screen that you can download a copy to be able to follow us uh, along, follow along this morning. Um, and for those of you who are listening on Adventist Radio London, lovely to have you once again, and we look forward to hearing your comments. So in the usual way, those on YouTube or on live stream, send in your comments, your questions, and we will get those read out. And for those who are listening on the radio, get in touch in your usual way by texting the word HOPE to 82228. Leave a space and then put in your message and we will pick that up as well. This is a team effort, and I want to, it's the first time for a few weeks that I'm sitting with my partner in good things as opposed to crime. Let me say good morning to our senior pastor, Pastor Royston. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Elder Johnny. I, I think I've got more texts about you than about me <laughs> over the last <laughs> month or so. Oh, pastor, is Elder Johnny okay? Can we pray for Elder Johnny? Ah. Well, there is my, there is my partner in love, Amen. Elder Johnny, and um, we're here with you. And just to remind those of you who are watching uh, and you have been with us on this journey and you've been blessed, right now just send a text to five friends or email them and say, right, um, Croydon um, Live Sabbath School is on, it's inspirational, it's, it's a blessing. Um, five, just five friends. And let me thank those who have been sending this because the numbers are growing. And having done that, click on the like button um, so that whenever we come on, they can know that the word of God is spreading. Let's spread this gospel. Five, I'm going to challenge you right now. Stop, send five person. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Also, welcome back somebody who's no stranger. That's Elder Sasha Gillen from the Stratford Church. Good to have you, Sasha. Good morning to you. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Lovely. Lovely. And also, so, we've just got some feedback. feedback. Hopefully, we, we can, can fix, fix that. that. Okay, we're sorted. Sorry about that. Um, and last but by no means least, we have a new kid on the block. We welcome for the first time uh, Pastor Kirk Thomas that is joining us today. Good morning, Pastor Kirk. Good morning, sir. And I'm very happy to be with you uh, on this uh, illustrious uh, Sabbath School uh, panel. I'm happy to be here. Amen. So Pastor Kirk is the BUC Director for Personal Ministries, and we're glad that he's got the time to be with us today. So before we dig into God's Word, we ask at this time that you bow your heads and ask Pastor Royston if you could say a prayer for us. Father God, we're studying about deception, end-time deception. May we not be deceived. May we study your Word. May we live your Word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. So we're at lesson number 11 in our quarter. The study for this quarter, the overall theme is life everlasting on death, dying and future hope. For those of you that have been in the Adventist church for a long time, it's the state of the dead, effectively what we've been looking at. And today our lesson is entitled End Time Deceptions. Pastor Royston, if you can just read our memory verse for us found in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 through to 15, please. 
and the, the, the memory text says, and no wonder, even Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. So it is not strange if his ministers also disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Their end will match their deeds. Mm -hmm. We're going to dig into that later. I know you want to preach on that right now, Pastor. But we're going <laughs> to dig into the memory verse a little later on. So the phrase end time implies something that let's say hasn't happened yet or, or something to come but don't be fooled into thinking that because we are living in such a time as this a, a time when the supernatural and the mythical are constantly being pushed through hollywood television and even the media so pastor royston i i, I was thinking you know being deceived by someone at any time is not a good thing. But in the race of life that we are all running in, what's the implication of the timing of this deception in our race? Uh, and, and notice the key, the key uh, it's, it's the end time, end time, or the, uh, not just the time of the end, but the end of time. You know, things are coming to a close. Mm. Um, and, and, and so if I can, uh, you know, you know it, it seeps into what the memory text says, that Satan will disguise himself as light. And so his cohorts will do the same thing, but this time disguise themselves as, as deliverers, of, deliverers of righteousness. Mm. And so here, here am I, I'm, I'm trying to find out, you know what, because one of the greatest fear that each of us has is the fear of dying. And if, and if I believe that when I die, I'm not dead, mm. then I can do anything mm. that I want to do. Or if I die and I believe that, okay, I have a second chance and I can live how I want to live on this side of eternity. Uh, but, but, but if I know the truth, if I know the truth that if I die and my deeds are bad and there's consequences and my deeds are good, there are consequences, then surely my lifestyle will change. Yes. So, so, so this idea, Elder Johnny, and, and, and our listeners and viewers, um, if you're fooled, then you can do whatever you want to do. But if you know the truth, it will set you free. So your decision will be based upon facts and truth rather than upon deception. Um, I don't know if that helps in yeah, that yeah. way. But so I've, I've made a note here, Elder Johnny, says, be careful how you are, how you see things, and how receptive you are to new ideas. Uh, remember... Doctrine matters. Yes, yes, yes. And, and for me, you know, when I think of the, the race of life, you know, it's not a sprint as we know. So if we use the imagery of, of, of say, athletics, track and field, as the, the Americans call it, you know, if, if the race, you know, if there is a hurdle or something that has happened at the start of the race, there is the possibility, depending on what that, issue is or that hurdle is there is the possibility that if you are sidetracked at the start there's a possibility that you may be able to catch up and sort yourself out before the end of the race but if uh, this hurdle this this deception this problem happens just before the finishing line oh dear but so, those so are my uh, thoughts are, are you saying that there's a terminal um, it's terminal if it's at the end but if it's at the start of the race then then, then you have a chance of getting up, rethinking, rereading, re, re, reshaping, restoring your, 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 your entire ideal. But if this is the end, this is the end, this is the end. Well, you know what? Let us throw it out there. So listeners, do you agree with Pastor? Being deceived at any time is not good. But in the race of life with we're all running. What's the implication of the timing of this deception on our race? Let's hear your thoughts on that, and we will get them read out in the usual way you know how to get in touch. So while you're thinking about that, the lesson this week highlighted end time deceptions, deceptions such as mysticism, near-death experiences, reincarnation, necromancy and ancestor worship and 
impersonations, personations. I think that's how you say that. So, Elder Sasha, if I can come to you, let's look at mysticism. Can you give us a definition of what you see mysticism is? I've got a few definitions. Um, if we look at the Collins Dictionary, it defines it as a religious practice in which people search for truth, knowledge and closeness to God through mediation and prayer. And Webster says it's the belief that a direct knowledge of God, spiritual truth or ultimate re reality can be obtained through subjective experiences like intuition or insight. But according to our quarterly, it says from a religious perspective, it implies a union of individual with the divine or absolute in spiritual experience or trance. And we can illustrate this through worship, um, experience in certain churches. Oftentimes, worship can sometimes replace the authority of the word of God mm. when you make your own subjective experiences, causing the Bible to lose a lot of his doctrinal functions. Mm. And it also makes Christian vulnerable to his own experiences, which then opens them up to deception. Whoa, that's deep. That is deep. So, so Pastor Kirk, you know, bearing that definition in mind that um, Elder Sasha just shared, how does the parable found in Matthew 7, verses 21 through to 27, help us stand against mysticism? If you can share that with us, please. First of all, I'll, I'll read a text uh, from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Mm. And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these things of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now, in terms of this parable and mysticism, we have to rely as Christians and as human beings on a whole on the solid word of God. It is the word of God that will prevent us from falling into all of these uh, different uh, belief systems and all of these myths and, and fables uh, that are out there. This parable teaches us that some people are doing things, they are worshipping things or spirits or whatever they're worshipping, thinking that they're actually worshipping God. Mm -hmm. But unless your worship is based upon what the Bible says and what the Word of God gives directives, uh, to do, then you are basically just beating the air. You're not really making sense or you're not really pleasing God or you're not doing the requirements of God. So the requirements of God are outlined in his word. It is there in the Bible in terms of what we should believe, how we should behave, how we should treat each other, how we should deal with situations that arise in our families, in our society, etc. It is all there in the Word of God as a guidance. And that is the sure and firm foundation. If you decide to build a different foundation from this or build on a different foundation, then your house will definitely fall. Mm -hmm. And that the symbolism of that house falling is... Yeah, you might want to say, well, if a, if a literal house is built on a weak foundation, it will obviously fall. But this house here is talking about the body temple. It's talking about our lives, talking about our characters, talking about the choices that we make. If we don't build on the word of God, 
if we don't obey the word of God, then our existence will crumble. Our lives will crumble. Our characters will crumble. Our hopes and dreams and aspirations will crumble. Our families will crumble. And everything that we hold dear to us will crumble because we're not building on the foundation that Christ has given, that God has given, which is the Word of God. And that's why mysticism and all of these other philosophies will creep in to our lives if we do not build on the foundation that Christ has already given to us. Amen. Thank you so much. Just before I go to our studio class, um, Elder Sasha, is there anything you wanted to comment on? I think Pastor summed it up quite nicely. I just want to emphasize the point that um, those who think it doesn't matter about what doctrine they believe in, so long as they believe in Jesus Christ, they're on a dangerous ground. Mm. But you have to be sure what you're believing in. Wow. Wow. Thank you both. Thank you both. So we have a comment coming in from one of our studio class members. Good morning to you, Sister Jackie. I'm not sure if you're hearing um, Sister Jackie at the moment, so we're just going to check her microphone um, in the meantime to just make sure just, everything is okay. Um, just. We're just testing some sound. Are, okay. are we hearing you, Jackie? Are we hearing Jackie? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So, um, deception is getting something from someone under false pretenses and and foundation like pastor said is crucial we have to build mm. um on a good foundation but actually we can build on on the foundation and stay there externally we may look like we are doing all that we need to do mm -hmm. but actually this thing is about hearts and minds this thing is about our hearts and if our hearts belong to Christ, if we have him in our sight, our motives for doing anything will make sure that we, are, we remain on the right path and deception is much more difficult. So the word and the foundation and all of these things are important, but it's about our hearts and minds and our motivation for doing things. Um, I just feel that that's really, really important. Great point. Heart, mind, motivation. Indeed. Keep your thoughts coming in. Let me go to you, Pastor Royston, and see if anyone's come back on the point of the race of life or any other comments that have come in. Yeah, yeah. Rodney Smith. Welcome, Rodney, as usual. Very early in Bermuda there. says He talks about false theory. E.G. White talks about false theory. He says once, once it takes root in the heart, it's hard for us to, um, to, to get rid of them. And um, for those who are farmers, they understand the analogy. Mm -hmm. I want to welcome Angela MB from Egypt. Amen. <laughs> welcome, first Egyptian we're seeing here. Welcome, Angela, may God bless you. Um, Eliza Clark talks about the great deception. She says, I'm gonna put it here, says, the implication of end time deception is, uh, is, is that the devil is like a roaring line using false prophets to fool God's people. Mm -hmm. Hold on to the word of God and you can never go wrong. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, doctrine matters. Yeah. It's not just about believing in Jesus, but also following the things that Jesus taught. Rodney Smith again made the point about being a builder. He says just putting down stuff on the rock is not sufficient, um, but you need to dig into the rock. And Patrick, Patrick Gale made this point. Um, he, he says it is when the storm comes mm -hmm. that we recognize um, which, which house was firmly um, secured. He says, both houses for a long time appeared equally secure. But when the storm comes, the foolish, the foolish one crumbles. So it is with, with the life of those who ignore not just Jesus, but the words mm. of Jesus. Very deep thought. Um, Erlene over there in Montreal says, yes, I agree with Pastor. Deception is, is in a hold is not good. But it, if, it is, if, if it is, we are willing to learn God does not leave us in our ignorance. That's why he stays. That's why he says, you shall seek me and find me if you search for me. Notice the, uh, the last part says, with all of your heart. Mm. Nigel says, um, at the end of complacency tends to set in. 
we must be especially vigilant the closer we come to the end. Um, um, Clive Cameron says, remember, remember, we all accept Christ at different times in the race of salvation. Mm. There are early starters and late starters. However, to finish the race is the important thing. And he calls yes. this 9 verse 1, that the race is not for the swift, mm -hmm. nor is the battle for the strong, but he that endure it to the end. There's a comment here that I, I think I, I don't know, I, I skipped over and I wanted, oh, no, I didn't skip over it. Um, I thought I skipped over a comment there. I'm w nothing on live stream. I'm waiting for that. But Johnny, can I share something with you? Go ahead, sir. There are two kinds of theology. One is called embedded theology, and one is called deliberate theology. Now, embedded theology is the theology that, that you have been taught. Um, taught, you know, what, what is your faith? And then we have what is called deliberate theology. Deliberate theology is what has been caught. In other words, okay, what do I hear? And we're going to talk about that later on. Reflection, learning, experience. People ask the question, why? And, and, and if you're, hear this now, if your embedded theology is wrong, if, you're, if what you've been taught is wrong, then obviously your, 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 your deliberate theology will also be called into question because what you're taught is how you will live. But unless you learn to question your, your, your embedded theology, what have you been taught? So, for example, if you have been taught um, that the dead, that we're going to look at that at the end of the lesson, about the conditional immortality of the soul, then, then how you live will have an implication. Mm -hmm. So it is critically important that what we have been taught, we, 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 we need to ask why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why is it when somebody dies, I can't see them, but their spirit is still alive? Why can I talk to the dead, but I can't see them? So, so your embedded theology, um, it can be a dangerous thing. So you need to know, you need to know, you need to dig into mm. the matter. Embedded theology and taught theology. I am learning this morning. Thank you very much. Keep your thoughts and your comments coming in, please. Let me go out with another question. Um, your child of 10 years old and brought up in church, asks you one day, what's wrong with me reading about my future in the stars? You know, the, the signs um, that you see in the papers and things like that. What's wrong with me, with me reading about my future in the stars? If wise men studied the, prophesying, studied the stars prophesying Jesus' birth. All right, so I said that kind of wrong. Let me say the question again. So the child comes up to you and saying, what's wrong with me looking in the stars about my future considering in the Bible Wise men look to the stars when prophesying Jesus' birth. How would you reply to your child? Ten years old, brought up in church. Let's have your thoughts. You, you kind of understand, hopefully, where I'm going with that. So, um, uh, the, the second end-time uh, deception that was highlighted in the lesson is referred to as near-death experiences. So, Pastor Kirk, I'm coming to you for a definition. What are near-death experiences, or NDEs, I think they're abbreviated to? Well, in a, in the, in a layman's term of defining NDEs, or near-death experiences, it's about what people say happened to them when they almost died. So, people said they, that they were near to death. They, they didn't actually die, but they thought that they had died. Um, some people have said that they, they, they saw stars. Some said that they saw bright lights. Some say that they, they saw their, their, their mother or father who had long been dead um, waving to them. Um, some have said that they saw a great river, mm. and um, if they had, you know, cross over that river, that would have been it. But they didn't cross over the the river. Some said that they um, there was a boat uh, there waiting with with a figure in it to mm. take them over to the other side, but they didn't enter the boat because if they had entered the boat, they would have gone over the other side. So people have given all kinds of of, of experiences um, of near death, um, uh, near death, you know, mm. sort of phenomena, mm -hmm. uh, and so a definition really would be what 
what people say yeah. <laughs> and that almost happened to them yeah. as they were in this unconscious state. Uh, and they then they came back. They 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 actually they actually woke up um, from from that from that that experience. Uh, it is it is also good to note that those who talk about these near death experiences have actually written books, and so these books have actually catapulted into bestsellers because everybody seem to be fascinated with what happens after death. It's one of the big questions that, that people ask. I, I remember having a, a, when I was being taught how to drive here in the UK, because you know, when you drive abroad you, and you come to the UK, you have to be taught all over again mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> to drive. <laughs> and uh, um, my, my instructor, um, he was just, the, Right throughout the, the sessions that we had, his one question was, what really happens when you die? He, he was so interested in the afterlife. Mm. Um, we need to note a couple of facts here, though, even as I bring these comments to a close, that none of the people who wrote about near-death experiences really died. Mm. So, 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 so they cannot be any authority in terms of what really happens, you know, when someone um, dies. And, and the, the second thing we need to note as well is that many of these um, near-death experiences resemble hallucinations. Now, mm. there was a guy by the name of um, Dr. Ladles Maduna who carried out an experiment and he administered 30% carbon dioxide and 70% oxygen to a subject. And... Afterwards, the subject uh, stated, I felt as though I was looking down at myself, as though I was way out here in space. I felt sort of separated. That's hallucination, right? And the other thing, the last thing that I would like to say on this is that, that many, uh, that all of these out-of-death, uh, out-of-body um, experiences or near-death experiences, they really contradict scripture. Mm. Because if you if you really die, you you will be dead, dead, dead. You, you would not know, know anything. As, yeah. as, as Job points out in Job 7, 9, he says, as a cloud vanishes and is gone, so he who goes down to the grave does not return. He will never come to his house again. He doesn't mm. know uh, anything. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. Just going back to your driving instructor, surely that couldn't have given you a lot of confidence if he's talking to you about what happens when you die while you are driving. Anyway, you passed and that's the important thing. Right, Sister Sasha, now, you know, there is no evidence of NDEs uh, from those resurrected in the Bible. Seeing we are in spiritual warfare, our only defense is to wear the armor of God. So, if you can, Elder Sasha, the, the first two elements of the armor of God in Ephesians 6 verse 14, just uh, share that with us and maybe how that can help in the battle for spiritual warfare. Thank you, Elder Johnny. Okay, Ephesians 6 verse 14 says... Stand therefore, having your lines girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now this verse draws our attention to the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. If I break them down a bit. The belt of truth, Paul says we should have our lines girt about with the belt of truth. Remember how Satan operates through deception and lies. The only way to get rid of lies is by shining the truth on them. Mm -hmm. There are at least 10 people raised from the dead in scripture, but aside from Jesus' post-resurrection testimony, we don't see any statements from people who experienced an NDE in the Bible. Now, a breastplate of righteousness. In Paul's days, the Roman soldiers wore a breastplate made of bronze or chain mount. Its purpose was to cover the heart. For the Christian, the breastplate is the righteousness of Christ. Mm. The moment you become a Christian, Christ clothes you in his righteousness. Yes. The breastplate is meant to protect our heart and souls from deceptions of the evil one. And we need the righteousness of Christ because Isaiah 64 tells us we are all as unclean things and all our righteousness are filthy rags. Mm -hmm. 
But because our righteousness deeds do not measure up to, to protect us from Satan, Christ gives us his. Now, how does this link to NDEs? The Bible doesn't provide information on their death experience, but it does mention several occasions when a person died and was later restored to life. And as Seventh-day Adventists, if we believe in the biblical teaching on the unconscious state of the dead, then NDEs have no place in our thought process. Interestingly, Paul doesn't say believers must fight against these things, but he tells us to stand firm. Stand firm in the truth of the Lord and his righteousness. Yeah. Why? Because the battle isn't ours, it's the Lord's. Amen. So he doesn't fight in, we just stand firm. Amen. Thank, thank you so much. Just before I go to Sister Jackie, pa Pastor Kirk, is there anything you wanted to come back on? Yeah, I totally agree um, with Sister Sasha that, you know, these, these elements of, 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 of spiritual protection are the elements that we need in this day and age so that we can be able to withstand the arrows of the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, those arrows are, are, are serious, they are fierce, they are piercing, and they are deceptive. Because they, they, they mimic the truth, yes. <laughs> and, you know, and, but, but it's not the truth. You know, it comes very, very close. Mm -hmm. And that's why the deception, and, and that's why, you know, Matthew says that if Christ does not shorten the days, even the very elect, mm -hmm. those who have been elected to go to heaven can be deceived. Mm -hmm. How close the deception would be to the truth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Sister Jackie, you got a comment? Yeah, gosh, I, it, it, it just reminds me from what Pastor Kirk was saying and what Sasha was saying that truth mixed with error is so, so dangerous. Mm -hmm. Right, but, but what I wanted to, to say is the memory verse. When I think of this, this day's um, lesson, it just brought me to the memory verse because Satan himself will show himself as an angel of light and what these people are saying that they're seeing is this light and, and what so on. Satan himself will disguise himself as an angel of light. And going back to what Pastor was saying, even the very elect could be deceived. And, and this is so, so important to me. And I just always go back to, it's about hearts and minds and, and staying connected with the vine and staying connected with Christ and just standing on the word. Amen. Thank you so much, Jackie. Pastor Royston, anything coming in from parents of 10-year-old children or otherwise, please? Yeah, um, let me go to the live stream because um, I missed their comment. So Alana <clears throat> reflected on end time. It says end time is right now for everyone because what you die believing is your reward when Christ comes. Mm -hmm. And I think I did make that point. Mm -hmm. Kaz says the issue is while we know it's end time, we don't know how long we have. Jesus could come at any time. No, no one knows the day or the hour. Therefore, it is presumptuous to think we, are, we, have, we have time mm. to play with. It's best to be ready. Yes. Alana talks about Christ. Christ is the living word, and God's word is as solid as a rock. And I think we have touched on that um, quite a bit. Um, and here's a thought um, from um, Sister, Maria. Sister Maria. She hasn't um, placed any for a long time. But now she says, the closer we are to the end, the more common Satan deception are becoming are becoming popular culture is imbued by them and moves people away from the truth. And I think we can move right that into, um, into the idea of N N NDE. Um, even the sockers, astrologers, sorcerers, astrologers, etc., couldn't tell Nebuchadnezzar or Belteshazzar what their vision were. Only God could. Why? Because it is only God who knows, holds your life, holds your future. Very powerful thought. Now here's a question somebody wants to know. Um, People use when people say they are um, they have had near death experience. A lot of time, people say people are clinically dead, and um, Kaz wants to know what does that mean. Um, we can hold that one, Elder Johnny. What does it mean to be clinically dead? Okay. But but here here we go now on the question about what we would tell our ten year old. Um, it's one person I've said I've I've seen who have said it. I'm trying to find that comment. Um, he, he must increase. Tell your ten year old. Follow the brightest star, the morning star. Mm. Jesus, his word, the Bible. Um, so so, so um, 
Okay, Karen Bibi says, the wisdom of the wise men came from God and reading your, your astrology comes from men who probably don't even acknowledge God. So mm -hmm. it is their own interpretation. Mm -hmm. But remember what the Bible says, that Satan will use his people mm -hmm. and allow truth to look like righteousness. Mm -hmm. So let us not be deceived. There are a lot of people within the church who are using um, truth, but as Sister Jackie says, they are fusing truth with error. Yes. Do you know? And Twilight Zone. I remember watching the Twilight Zone. Lord help me. <laughs> um, so, so I refused to watch um, Harry Potter. Yes. I should think so too. And the Philosopher's Stones. Um, but then I remember Tom and Jerry, mm. where Tom would die, mm. and then Tom would come back mm. without knowing that Satan was subtly placing in our minds mm -hmm. these sublim subliminal thoughts. So we need to be very careful as to what we watch. Yes. Because that is what we called um, deliberate theology. I was taught that once you're dead, you're dead. But now I'm seeing people dying and coming back to life. In a lot of movies, you see people die and then suddenly they reappear. How did that happen? Um, so we, we, need to, we, need to, we need to be careful what we watch. Here we go. Erlene says, long ago, the Lord used different things in order to communicate with his people. He, has, he had cloud by day and fire by night. Now he has written his word, which we need to read. He said to look to him. So that is something that we need to think about. Final, final one, Elder Johnny. Um, Gillian says, we need to stay focused on Christ so that our minds will be protected from all deception. But yes. what we've also said, Gillian, that just believing in Christ is not sufficient. Mm -hmm. You have to also live what Christ taught and how he lived. Mm -hmm. Finally, having spoken to people near, near that experience, what is revealed in their experience often seems in line with their worldview. Mm -hmm. Deliberate theology. Some mm -hmm. individuals have similar trauma, report no experience. Actually, there is a website. There's a website that has been constructed for, uh, where people record their near-death experience. But we need to focus on Christ and his word so that we can live accordingly. Otherwise, we shall be deceived. Can I remind those who are watching? I know I've looked online. There's about 877. If you just send to five friends right now, we would have over 4,000 people online. Can you send, send five friends and say to them, we're studying the word of God. You want to know about death and dying? Come and listen. Come and listen. So right now, send to four, five friends and ask them to join us at this time. Over to you, Elder Johnny. Thank you, Pastor. The, the, the question that came in about clinically dead, if there are any medical professionals online, happy for you to comment on that. What I would say, go back to... Um, a few weeks ago, um, where I made reference to Fabrice Mwamba. For those of you who don't know, he was a football or, or soccer for the Americans. Um, and he had a cardiac arrest on the pitch. And I think it was like for seven minutes that they couldn't get a heartbeat from him. The question is, though, was he clinically dead? Did his, his brain activity stop? So uh, some, I'll, I'm happy for a medical professional to answer that question that came on there. If you're just joining us at Advent, on Adventist Radio London, this is Croydon Sabbath School panel coming out to you live this Sabbath morning. We'd love to hear from you. So let me put another question on the floor. Um, we heard about truth and righteousness. So share your thoughts too on how truth and righteousness can act as protection for you in the spiritual warfare. We've heard some comments already. Let's hear your comments on how truth and righteousness can act as a protection for you in the spiritual warfare. So another end time deception highlighted this week in the lesson is reincarnation, reincarnation. So, Elder Sasha, coming back to you, before you, you, you read Hebrews 9, 25 to 28, and 1 Peter 3, verse 18, can you define the term reincarnation? And it would be good to see if there's any evidence in those texts as well. Elder Sasha. Okay. The Cambridge Dictionary tells us that reincarnation is the belief that a dead person's spirit returns to the life in returns to life in another body. 
Now, Hindus believe that the external soul goes through a progression of consciousness, or samsara, in six classes of life, anquitics, plants, reptiles, and insects, birds, animals, and human beings, including the residents of heaven. So the process is a dead person's spirit returning to life in another body, regardless of what the body is. Now, if we go on to the texts, Hebrews 9, verse 25 to 28 says, nor yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest entereth into the holy place. Every year they're with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away the sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that looked for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now, 1 Peter 3 verse 18 says, For Christ has also suffered for sins, but the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to dead in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit. Now, both verses have clearly indicated that even Jesus died just once. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 9 verse 27 clearly states that it's appointed to men to die once. Reincarnation goes against these texts. Mm, mm, that's clear, really. I can find no uh, argument against that. So, Pastor Kirk, again, you know, bearing that in mind, what's the next piece of the armor, our, our, our spiritual armor, the armor of God that we should wear, and how can this protect against end time deceptions? Ephesians 6, verse 15, please. Ephesians uh, 6, 15 says, And having shod your feet with a preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, when I read this, this text, I, I think of you know, like a horse, you know, you, you, you will put on a shoe <laughs> sort of um, on a horse so that you, the horse's um, feet can be protected from the, the hard surfaces, um, especially if it's, a, if it's a work horse, you know, um, you're using the, the horse um, on roads, um, etc. The, the horse has to walk on, on hard surfaces. And so for the Christian, I think that shutting our feet with the gospel, and it is called the gospel of peace, it's about protecting us from, uh, as, as we walk, as we walk this, this life, as we walk this, this road, as we run this race, as we do this, this journey. If you're an athlete and you are running on a synthetic track, it will be foolhardy to run barefooted, you know, uh, or barefooted on that that track. I mean, you you wouldn't get you know any traction. You will damage the the bottom of your feet. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you you will be in trouble. But you wear a running shoes, right? Uh, a pair of running shoes that's specially made to run on a synthetic track or grass or wherever. You will get grip. Uh, to run, you will not slip, you will not slide, you you will make steady progress. Mm-hmm. I'm talking from experience here, you mm-hmm. know, uh, growing up running uh, as an athlete, some, you know, you 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 didn't have the money to buy mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the shoes, and you will uh, turn up there barefooted, and 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 here, and and the others will have their shoes, and of course you will lose the race because mm-hmm. you know, these guys, you know, they had all the equipment, so. Putting on that, the, the gospel, the gospel of, of peace, it says to us, first of all, that we need to walk in peace. Yeah. We, we need to be peacemakers in this, in this world. We, we need to be people who are swift. Okay. Very slow to, to condemn. We, we are people who spread a gospel of love, uh, the, the Yuangalan, the gospel, the good news 
the Greek says, the, the euangelon, the, the, the good news of salvation. We should be a people who exude a fragrance of peace and love and tranquility that will light up, uh, beautify any room or any relationship that we are in. And those relationships include relationships at church, relationships with our neighbors, relationships in our workplaces, wherever we are, they should be a sweet fragrance emanating from us that says that the God we serve is a God of peace and, 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 and a God of love and a God of, of care. In addition to that, shutting our feet with, the, with the, the, the gospel, the gospel of peace, means as well that we should walk in the truth that is based, that is biblically based. Yes. Right? We should walk in the truth that is biblically based. We should walk in the commandments of God. We should walk in the light of God. Because you have to understand that whenever the devil is trying to deceive us with all of these mysticisms and all these things, there's always light involved. Mm -hmm. you, you, you notice? There's always light involved, you know? Because God is a God of light. And so if one if people know that he's a God of light. So if you bring light alongside with the deceptions, people say, ah, mm. this must be right. This must be true. You know, this must be something that I should follow because light is here and God is a God of light. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the truth, the, the gospel, the Yuangalan, the gospel of peace helps us to walk in the true light that shines from Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. Just before I go to Sister Jackie, um, Elder Sasha, anything else from yourself on that? I just think it's important to remember, oftentimes people, they don't necessarily believe in what they should believe, but what they want to believe. Um, so oftentimes, a lot of our belief system goes in the way we feel. Mm. Um, does it bring peace and comfort? Mm. We need to remember that's not, that doesn't make it true. That's right. And so for those of us who take the Bible seriously, we know that reincarnation has no place in the Christian faith. Amen. Thank you very much. Sister Jackie, you got a point. Yeah, this, this reincarnation makes me think, <laughs> reminds me that, you know, we can't save ourselves. It's not possible. Reinca reincarnation makes us believe that if, we can keep coming back and keep coming back there is some way and something that we can do to save ourselves and it stops us from accepting the gift of salvation that's already given right believe me we the word is clear after death there is no opportunity mm -hmm. for anything and if you believe that you can keep coming back then when you have that once death, it's all over and you didn't know because you've been deceived. It, it, it's a dangerous thing, reincarnation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that. Pastor Royston, anything coming in online? Yeah, yeah just, to jump into that just to jump into that reincarnation conversation. Um, yeah, it's, it's, reincarnation is based on the good deed concept. Karma, it's, it's, you know, it's that idea of you know, um, you, you're moving from one stage to another until you reach that ultimate stage when you're at one with the universe. Um, and and it's, a, it's, it's basically an Eastern, we call it Eastern, it's in the Eastern, Eastern concept that has swept into Hollywood mm. um, where the Scientologists like, um, what's this guy, is, is um, Mission Impossible, guy, what's Cruise. his name? Tom. John Cruise, who is one of Tom. the major um, uh, proponents of that concept. Um, but but that is dangerous. It's mm -hmm. very dangerous. You know, once you're dead, you're dead. And, and as Sister Jackie said, let me not go back into that. But here is someone who has made a point that one love, I'm going to read um, about NDM in a, ND in a minute, but one love made a point. There are many ND from God. ND should be weighed individually. To cast mm -hmm. all ND as, as, as deception from Satan is quite concerning. God is, God is a spirit and we worship in spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, one love, I'm not going to, um, one love, I'm not going to say, I'm not, I, 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 what I'm going to say, one love is, um, this is where we mix truth and error. Mm -hmm. God, 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 God is spirit. What does that mean? What does that mean? God is spirit. What does that mean? Um, 
Uh, and so when so you see you're now dividing the human um, personality um, one love into into multifaceted you know we, we are we're an essential being um, go back to um, go back to where the Bible says God blew into man the bird of life and man became a living being or a living soul if you want to use it that way so once you once you die um, one love that's it because the breath goes back to God because God is the one who gives breath to all of us right um, I think we, we studied that one love many, many moons ago when we started out about how we came into being. So, so nothing, there's no separation. Nothing leaves. What leaves your body is your breath. Mm -hmm. So when, when what's, what's left, so once the breath has left the body, once total breath has, has left the body, you are totally dead. Mm -hmm. Someone who's clinically dead, here's what um, um, a nurse says means no, no heartbeat, no breathing, um, little or no brain activity, but it doesn't, but it doesn't necessarily spell death. Mm. Clinical death is, is, is treated as a, as a medical emergency with CPR, mm -hmm. and then they revive you from that. That's what a nurse has said. Um, Anthony Br Brumble says, truth, truth and righteousness are synonymous in the spiritual world. There are templates by which we can detect deception with our correct understanding of both principle. Um, Mikey Pierce, I have Mikey, welcome back. I haven't seen you for a long time. Welcome back, Mikey. Can you say hello to five of your friends to join us so that they can be a part studying about the dead, state of the dead, and, and so they can live a life waiting for the second coming of Christ. Mikey says, Joseph should be careful not to put too much faith in doctors as to become an idol or god is jehovah rapha the god who heals i think he, he he's looking at this idea um about about the clinically when somebody's clinically dead if somebody's noticed they didn't say the person is dead the person is clean once a person has died there's nothing a doctor can do so i've been into many situations and, and, and the doctor said they're not going as yet. So they put them in the machine, Elder Johnny. Mm -hmm. And the moment they take the machine off, then there's a, a flat line that mm -hmm. comes on. And the doctor says to me, Pastor, there's nothing else that we can do. Once somebody is, is totally dead, the only person who has the power to resurrect, I'm not preaching, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. the only person who has the power to resurrect mm -hmm. is Christ. Mm -hmm. Because he's the resurrection. And and the life. So once somebody's dead, they're dead. If you're clinically dead, it means that there's still life in you and they can restart the heart and suddenly everything kicks in. Thank you. Thank you. Th th there was a question in the quarterly, I think it was Friday's uh, study lesson, and it said, how can you help others to overcome the evil one's end time deceptions without being exposed to his deceiving influence yourself i'd love to know what your answers were to that depending on where you are in your life so here's the question going out how can you help others to overcome the evil ones end time deceptions without being exposed to his deceiving influence yourself let's hear what you have to say on that one so some of us have learned a new word this week, uh, that of necromancy, and together with ancestor worship is another end time deception. So Pastor Kirk, putting you in the hot seat, what is necromancy and ancestor worship, please? All right, this, this is a, a big one. <laughs> um, <laughs> necromancy is actually the practice of of, of magic or, or, or black magic. Um, it involves the, the communication um, with the dead by summoning spirits um, as apparitions or, or, or visions or by the supposedly resurrection of these spirits for the purpose of, of divination, uh, imparting the means to foretell future events, discovery of hidden knowledge and returning a person to life or to use a dead person um, as, as, a, as a weapon. Um, and so this, this whole thing about um, necromancy also involves black magic, black arts, uh, witchcraft, wizardry, the occult, occultism, enchantment, divination, demonology, voodooism, voodoo, hoodoo, 
witchery, witching, spiritualism, um, and and uh, uh, the, the whole gamut. And if you are from the uh, Caribbean, um, it will be Obia, <laughs> um, and, and 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 these kind of these kinds of, um, of 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 arts and 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 black black magic, ancestry worship. It involves us ancestry worship as well because ancestry worship speaks about the ancestors knowing more than us who are alive. There's the their spirits knowing more than us who are alive, and therefore, every so often people would pour libations, um, give offerings to them, and they believe that the ancestors can actually. Uh, tell us uh, our future. The ironical thing about it is the ancestors did not even know their own future. So, but now they can tell us, they can tell us um, our our future. Um, and so we find, for example, in the the, the celebration of these holidays that um, speak about the end of slavery, etc. You will find that certain groups will go to the the sea. And they will pour libations, give offerings to the spirits of the, the slaves that died in the Atlantic crossing. Uh, you find that there are some people um, who will bury their, their, their dead um, uh, underneath their, their homes so that they can have protection from that they, they, those who are dead and they bury there, they can have protection um, from them. Uh, this involves the the resurrecting of, of of the spirit by someone who is a shaman um, or a, an obia man or someone who believes in black hearts, um, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, to to speak. And one of the the movies that actually made this thing even more popular in the modern era was the movie Ghost which starred Whoopi Goldberg and um, Patrick Swayze, who is now dead um, himself, um, where there was an accident and then you see Patrick Swayze, his spirit is coming out of his body and then he- Okay, I think we, I think we get the message. I think we got the message, <laughs> thank, thank, thank you very much. Now, I, I, think, I think for me, um, just before I, I take a comment in the studio, for me, one of the most controversial events in the whole of Scripture is found in 1 Samuel 28, 3 through to 25. So, Elder Sasha, if, if I could just ask you to, to summarize, you know, we haven't got time to read the verses, but just summarize this, this event for people that don't know um, and, and what this is saying, please. Right. Okay, this event... Um Saul goes to the Witch of Endor. He goes to a nighttime seance with the Witch of Endor. Um, this event probably, we can fairly say, is the bottom of Saul's moral compass. Um, he goes off to the Witch of Endor. You have to remember that Saul had forbidden Israel to go off and do the, and um, forbidden these kinds of practices. He had told them that they would die. He would kill them if they went off. So Saul was... Matt Hancock before Matt Hancock was Matt Hancock. <laughs> made a rule and then he broke it. Okay? He knows he's doing wrong, which is why he disguises himself and he sneaks in. Um, but he's so desperate because he can no longer hear Jesus and he really wants to know what's going on. So he goes off and he finds the witch and he asks the witch to tell it to get Samuel for him. Now, we've got to remember that Saul didn't want Samuel's advice when Samuel was alive. But all of a sudden, Samuel's dead, and now he's seeking a witch to go and find Samuel so Samuel could talk to him and advise him because he could no longer hear from God. Um, the, now, the fact that the spirit claiming to be Samuel comes up and asks him, why are you bringing me here? What do you want? Um, that probably would tempt people to use this verse to prove that actually, yes, the Bible is saying that these things can happen. But if you... We've just lost connection yes, there. 
Okay, carry on. We, we lost you for a second, but carry on, Sash, no worries. Carry on. There's lots of um, theological debate saying, yes, it's true, no, it's not true. Um, on one side, the fact that Samuel, the spirit saying he Samuel comes up, says to people, yes, it's true. Mm. On another side, um, other debates are saying that, that it was a demon that came up pretending to be Samuel. Okay. Because Chronicles 10.13 says, so Saul died for transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. Mm. But regardless what side of the debate you're sitting on, if you take stock of the terror of the witch when this supposing Samuel came up, mm -hmm. she was frightened. Mm -hmm. And going back to what Pastor said, um, if we do go back to the ghosts, when Patrick Swayze came up, Whippy Goldberg was terrified. Mm -hmm. Because up until that point, they had pretended so long to raise these loved ones and speak to these loved ones. But when um, the spirit that was, that pretended to be, was meant to be Samuel came up, the witch was frightened letting you know that actually she didn't expect that to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I know, Pastor Kirk, you, you got some points to make, but let me just take a comment from, from Jackie here who had a, an issue. Um, so we'll take the comment in a moment. I think we'll, we'll... Okay, let's go straight to you, Pastor Kirk. That's fine. Let's, let's go to you. Anything uh, back from what uh, Elder Sasha said there? No, well, actually, um, it is all said. I mean, she, she was spot on, and, and we can move on from there. Thank you. Okay, okay, that's fine then. So, uh, let's go to Jackie now. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking about the question about um, deception and helping people. Um, years and years and years ago, I believe it was in this church, actually, I listened to a, um, a presentation where somebody was saying that people in banking... They only study the genuine notes. They know that the counterfeits are out there, but they only study the genuine notes. Why? They only study the genuine notes so that when the counterfeit presents itself, they are so familiar with the genuine notes that they will be able to see the counterfeit. And for me, what I pray and try to do and hope that we all do is to be so familiar mm. with the genuine so that when the deceit and the counterfeit presents itself, we know immediately this is not of God. This is not of the word. And so we're able to help people by helping them to study, to know what is genuine. Amen. That is such a deep thought. Thank you very much for sharing that. Pastor Royston, any thoughts coming in at this time? And that is why we, that is why we are studying this lesson That's every right. Sabbath and allowing the Word of God to speak for itself. Right. And there must be a consistency in Scripture. So back to the Witch of Endor, um, Elder Johnny, um, I think you did ask a question about... Um, how do we help others to overcome the evil one end time without being exposed in deceiving ourselves? Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and what is coming through is that we must study the word. We must know the word for ourselves. Um, one love come back, he says, near dead experts, they, they're not dead, but in a coma. So now one, one love is agreeing with the point. So God has the power to show such person spiritual thing which cannot be seen in our dimension otherwise we limit God into a box that's right now he's no no elder Johnny he mm -hmm. then adds mm -hmm. God is showing this person spiritual things because the person is in this coma oh you see what I'm trying to oh, say oh okay so he <clears throat> squeeze he wants to squeeze in the near death experience oh, okay. what we're saying is that um, if somebody's in a coma they're in an unconscious state that's right they're still they're still alive can they see things do they know things um, that's up for debate um, so Rodney says, um, if they come back speaking things about the Bible truth, then they are, they are wrong and against the Bible truth, then they are wrong and deceived. Like that point. So, so yes, it must be according to the Bible. Jennifer says, um, and Sister Sasha was talking about which side of the debate you're on. When King, when King Saul 
went to see the witch of Endor. This, the so-called prophet Samuel predicted his demise, and it did happen as predicted. He told the truth. Mm -hmm. The so-called mm -hmm. so prophet. Mm -hmm. um, the so-called prophet. And I'm emphasizing that. Sebastian says, Philippians 4 to 9, this will be a sure safeguard for any living soul against the deception of the devil. David also said in Psalm 109 verse 5, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Welcome Sister Sophie Nichols, yes. doing a fantastic work there with, um, with Asna. Amen. May God bless you as you work on diversity. Here we go. They could not tell their own future face, face with tears of joy. The ridiculousness of, of this satanic practice is telling there's no light, illuminate of mind in them. They are in total darkness. That's Talking right. about those individuals who tell you that they can predict the future. Mm -hmm. um, he must increase it. The witch says Samuel came up from the ground, not out of heaven. Isn't it strange, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. So here's a point. Uh -huh. Saul perceived, he assumed, Samuel was forbidden to talk to Saul, so that wasn't him. Mm. Notice, Powerful. notice. I like this. Mm. You see how the deception is? Mm -hmm. If you follow the purgatory route that the soul that is righteous goes to heaven, and the soul that is bad goes to hell. According to their theology, hell is in the ground and mm -hmm. heaven is above. So Samuel came out of the ground. Mm -hmm. this, this is a powerful point mm -hmm. that we need to think about this morning. It was a Samuel. Mm -hmm. Spot on, he must increase. I think you need to come and take over the pastor of this church. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> After I've left. <laughs> okay, Angela Green. If Satan, if Satan did this to King Saul, so he can do the uh, same today to those who put themselves under uh, his deceptive influence. We have to remain faithful to God's, God and his word and put on the whole armor. Amen. Which, which, which is what Sasha started out with, about having on the, the armor of God so mm -hmm. you can protect yourself against the fiery darts of the devil. It wasn't Samuel. It was Satan. The Bible says that the, the, the memory verse says that Satan will deceive us presenting himself as an angel of light. He, he did the same thing to Jesus. And Jesus called him out in Matthew chapter 4, if we read it carefully. So, so in the scenario with Saul, which I know, the source of his information was not godly. The spirit used to portray Samuel was demonic, even though the council may have given genuine, this genuine. Mm -hmm. And then she put the word deception. So, so, I tell you the story quickly. I was riding on the bus one day in Leeds when I lived in Leeds. Bless Leeds. I love Leeds. Um, a lady sat beside me, and suddenly I start to tell her things about herself. Never met her before. Um, she said, how did you know this? Um, and I was just guessing. <laughs> and she said, all those are true. You're a prophet. I said, no, I'm not a prophet. I'm a pastor. But <laughs> so, so people can tell you stuff about you. Um, and there are people... Who, who, can, who are connected to, to, to other forces, and they will tell you stuff about yourself. Satan is at the final point, Elder Johnny. Satan is a deceiver. He knows how, thank you, Erlene, he knows how beautiful heaven is, and he will try everything to keep you out. So keep your eyes on Jesus, who is our creator. Satan owns nothing. Don't be fooled by him. It wasn't Saul. Mm -hmm. So if you're seeing your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, who has passed on, it's not them. It's Satan who is trying to deceive you. Okay. Over to you, Elder Johnny. Okay, powerful point. So clearly, personations of the dead is another end time deception by the evil one and his agencies. Now, although uh, Elder Sasha, I, I think it was Sister Jackie that kind of expanded on the memory verse as, uh, already, but anything to add, what warning was Paul giving? You know, in Second Corinthians um, eleven fourteen to fifteen, is there anything else you wanted to add in terms of you know, that that memory verse itself? Yeah. Okay. If we read the memory verse again, it says, "And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work." So, as Sister Jackie said earlier, Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light. So we shouldn't be surprised if his servants are also, also masquerading as ministers of righteousness. Um, the memory verse says their ends will be what their actions deserve. So in verse 3, if we go back a bit in that um, chapter, in verse 3, he compares his deceit, his deceit is compared to the serpent in the garden, the one tempting Eve. 
You can also compare them to a man trying to seduce a throw woman away from her promised husband. The warning here is clear. It says, do not be deceived. Though outward appearance, through outward appearance or titles, by coating lies in a covering of truth, it's easier to fool people into accepting what is false. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for that. Pastor Kirk, I'm going to have to squeeze your time. If you can summarize for us the remaining elements of the armor of God, which we tried to feature throughout this morning, um, that are found in Ephesians 6, verses 16 to 18, please. Yeah, well, th those remaining um, elements um, include the shield of faith. Um, it includes the helmet of salvation. Um, it includes prayer and supplication in the spirit and also uh, perseverance. Yes. Uh, just, to, just to say that, you know, it, it is very important that we take a holistic view in terms of our salvation and our Christian life. Mm -hmm. they, they, oftentimes people deal with parts. You know, it's like sometimes how we deal with God. We, we deal with God like a genie in a bottle where we have this God in our pocket and when we need something, we pull him out and we say, can you please give me this thing? Mm -hmm. And when we get that thing, we put him back in. Mm -hmm. our, our Christian life should not, be lived as a genie in a bottle. It should be lived holistically. Yes. And we're going to make it holistically. We have got to take the entire armor of God so that we can be able to uh, defend against the fiery darts of the devil, which Amen. includes all those deceptions, etc., etc. Amen. Thank you very much for succinctly summarizing that. Panelists, as you pre prepare your takeaway comments, Pastor, let me have the... Oh, I think I've got a point. Okay, let me take, Pastor, your final online comments, please. Uh, uh, online um, um, live stream, great answer, Jax. Great answer, Sister Jackie. Thank you very much. Um, um, someone said thank you. Sebastian says... When Lazarus of Bethany was resurrected, people along with the Pharisees asked him, what did he see? He replied, he saw and remembers nothing. He was a living witness to what the state of the dead is. Mm -hmm. What a powerful thought. Thank you for that. The Bible mm -hmm. speaks and the Bible speaks clearly. Um, here we go quickly. Um, Rodney Smith says, deception will play a major role in end time events. Beware. Mm -hmm. And he puts the word beware in bold. Jennifer says, we... We have to be saturated in the word by being fully armored and stand firm. This, that sin will not be able to penetrate through the truth that we hold. That we hold. Um, so Eliza says, thank you, Pastor Perk. I'll keep God in the pocket. I'll, I'll make sure God is not in the pocket. So mm -hmm. true. Um, so, um, Anthony says, Saul was at the zero point of faith when the Spirit of God had departed from him. That is when he went to, witch, to see the witch of Endor. Remember, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the Spirit of God was not with him. Artful Dodger, last point, we need to share the truth about salvation in Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to do, to do the converting. The challenge is using our, our belief to counter our belief system. Yes. Embedded theology Amen. versus deliberate theology. Mm -hmm. um, finally, Helen says, Jesus advised us to be careful. Satan deception will be, will be so convincing. Even the elect yes. would have been deceived. Yes. To know God is very, very paramount. And finally, Mary says, put on the whole armor of God so you may be able to stand against the, that she said the tiles, but I think she means the wiles Indeed. of oh. the devil. Thank you very much. Elder Sasha, your takeaway point for us, please. Paul closed Ephesians 6 by telling us to always pray in the spirit. If we're going to fall for the schemes of Satan, if we aren't going to fall for the schemes of Satan, then we need to pray. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit. We need to pray for power to stand. We need to pray for strength against temptations. We need to pray for wisdom to make decisions with God. We need to pray for a greater faith and boldness to speak about Christ. Satan wants to lure us away from God, but God wants to equip us to stand in Christ because true freedom and happiness will only come from God. Thank you very much. And Pastor Kirk, your takeaway point, please. The takeaway is that we have to be ever vigilant not only for ourselves, but for our families, for our children, because the deceptions are there to, to destroy every part of us and every aspect 
of us, Amen. which includes our families. Amen. And therefore, vigilance is the watchword. And that is what we need to do at every stage. Test the truth. Test what is being said. Test what is being put out there against the word of God. And that will insulate us against the deceptions of the devil. Thank you so much. And Pastor Royster. In the music world, in the movie world, our media is using this great deception. And let me say to you that Satan will, will, will raise your relative who has died to convince you that the dead is not dead. Mm -hmm. But the dead is dead, and you need to trust in the hand of God. Amen. I can add nothing else. Next week, by God's grace, we're looking at the biblical worldview. And also in the evening, if you can't get to Croydon Church, tune in online. It's the Festival of Sound. Those of you who are familiar with our program, this is the end of year concert. Be Make sure and join us, if not in person, online, 7 p.m. next week, Saturday evening, by God's grace. Thank you to the Lord, first of all, for his presence. Thank you, panelists. Wow, it was great to have you here. AV, always there. Online facilitators, thank you for your facilitators. Thank you for your hard work. Studio class member and you online. Thank you all. Divine service follows after a short interlude. Let us close with prayer. Dear Lord, we want to thank you so much for your goodness and for your blessings. Help us, Lord, that we'll put on your whole armor so that we'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen.